Shoes make a difference. Life's an everyday adventure. That's my philosophy. Some mornings, the sun from my window feels so warm that I don't ever want to get out of bed. Today was so sunny and warm that it felt like the sun was breathing on me. I finally decided to open my eyes. Ugh! I shouted. The warm feeling wasn't the sun. It was the dog breathing right in my face. <laughs> I giggled as I sat up. After a few big stretches, I petted my favorite four-legged friend, then got dressed. Oh no! My moccasins were not where I had left them. I raced around my room trying to find them. The dog thought it was a game and followed me into my closet, under my bed, and then into the toy chest. The moccasins were nowhere to be found. How was that possible? I always put my moccasins in the same place every day so I can always find them. Hmm. There was nowhere else to look in my room, so I decided to look around the house. Maybe my parents moved them, or perhaps I did something funny with them in the middle of the night. I was confused and now had cold bare feet as I continued to search the house. When I was looking around the kitchen, I stepped on something. Ouch, I cried. I grabbed my foot and started hopping in pain. My mother came running in to help. What happened, sweet pea? Are you all right? She asked. We sat down to look at my foot. My mother giggled a little as she pulled out a piece of hard, dried pasta stuck between my toes. Aha, we'll get you fixed up in no time, she said as she ran to get the first aid kit. As she washed my little cut and put a bandage on it, my toes began to tingle like they usually do in my moccasins. Maybe I was ticklish, or maybe it was just my imagination. I smiled and joked, I had no idea pasta was so dangerous. <laughs> As we washed our hands, my mother said, This is why it's best to wear shoes, sweet pea. Shoes protect your feet from simple little cuts like this. Speaking of shoes, where are your moccasins? I told her about my mysterious missing moccasins. That is a mystery. I haven't seen them either. Keep looking, sweet pea. I'm sure you'll find them. My mother said as she went back to doing whatever it was she was doing. I couldn't think of anywhere else to look, but I did have an idea. I grabbed a paper grocery bag and some string. Then I ripped the bag in half and wrapped one half around each foot. I tied the string around my ankle to keep the paper bag on each foot. Cool! New shoes! I began walking proudly around the kitchen until I realized my shoes were missing something. I grabbed all of my colored markers and began drawing all over my new paper shoes. I drew M's on each toe and stars and rainbows. I drew anything and everywhere I could. My new paper shoes were fabulous. I went to get a glass of lemonade to celebrate. I was so excited about my new paper shoes, I began dancing and leaping and, oh no! I jumped so high that the lemonade spilled, which made me slip and my new paper shoes rip. I fell to the floor, but wasn't hurt, just sad. I guess paper shoes are not a very good idea. My frown turned upside down as a new idea raced into my head. I grabbed two dish towels and some more string. The cloth will be much better than paper, I thought, as I made my new dish towel shoes. Not only were they stronger than the paper, they were also much more comfortable. I dashed outside to give my new cloth shoes a test run. I ran from tree to tree as the dog chased me. These cloth shoes were great. Next, I tried cartwheels. On my third cartwheel, my foot caught a tree root. Not only did one of my new cloth shoes get torn off my foot, it also ripped in half. I sat down on the grass and thought about the cloth shoes. They didn't work either. What was I going to do without my favorite shoes? Then I began to think about all things you can't do without shoes. I couldn't go to the library. I couldn't get an ice cream. I couldn't even walk the dog without shoes. Life without shoes definitely isn't as much fun as life with shoes, and it's even a little dangerous. I had never thought about that before. I still hadn't found my mysterious missing moccasins, but another idea hit me. 
I ran to get a pair of my father's shoes. His shoes were too big for me, but I thought that if I stuffed lots of socks in the toe part, I could get them to fit. I stuffed and stuffed, and finally they were ready. I slipped my feet into my father's big shoes and began to walk. I laughed as I slowly took one giant step at a time. It was almost impossible to walk without dripping. His feet were way bigger than my feet. I finally made it safely all the way downstairs and decided to rest in my father's thinking room. Just then, I saw the dog walk by with something in her mouth. Something very familiar. I whipped out of my father's big shoes and peeked out of the doorway. The dog had my favorite doll in her mouth. I tiptoed as I followed her into the backyard. She dropped the doll in a hole she had dug and began to cover it. I ran to see if anything else was in there. Yahoo! My moccasins! I exclaimed as I slipped them back on and ran to share the good news with my mother. Being barefoot can be fun sometimes, but not all the time. Now I know how much shoes can make a difference. Molly Moccasins, Everyday Adventurer!